So in terms of climate change, when we think about this issue and we get recommendations from environmentalists or professors or other people who say, hey, we all can make a difference in terms of our greenhouse gas emissions, we get some suggestions like this. Uh, saving energy, painting white roofs. Mayor Bloomberg just kicked off a campaign to paint white roofs with Al Gore yesterday. Um, change your light bulbs. Get rid of the compact. Get rid of the uh, incandescents and put in compact fluorescents. Switch to green energy. Bike. Take public transit, which I'm sure many of you already do that in New York. And plant a tree or many trees. All great suggestions. And yet, I often wonder, where's the food? Where's the food in that? Uh, panoply of actions we can take. If we think of messages given to consumers, you might hear a little bit about eat local, eat organic, but for the most part, the climate impacts of food are really not in the public discourse very broadly. In terms of public policy, if we look at New York City, there is nothing on food in New York City efforts and plans to reduce greenhouse gases emitted by the city's residents and because of the city's commerce and lifestyles. Um, even in the media, when reporters report on issues of climate change, a study done at Johns Hopkins University found that a tiny fraction, 2.4% of those articles in print, in newspapers, discussed food at all and the links between food and climate change. And an even tinier percentage, just half a percent, had a substantial mention of those linkages. Now, the reason why that's a problem is, as Marisa's video also showed us, food actually matters quite a lot to climate, even if it's something that seems further away that we can't see, in the way we can see tailpipe emissions or we can see some of us forests being cleared. So according to the UN, an estimated one-third of human-caused greenhouse gas emissions actually result from agriculture, so practicing agriculture, and then changes in how land is used to produce both feed crops and other crops that humans consume directly, and farmed animals or livestock, which is more of the industry term. But on the left, you'll see a cleared uh, patch of forest in the Brazilian Amazon, where cattle would have been placed. And on the right, it's a mountain of corn somewhere in the United States Midwest. Right? Those mountains look pretty similar wherever they are. Um, to get to some of the meat and dairy of the matter, livestock operations actually have a very significant role in greenhouse gas emissions. So 18%, according to the United Nations, which is just about a fifth of the global total. And as Marisa had in her video, although we have a slightly different number here, but almost the same, um, that's considerably more than all the world's transportation systems. So that's all the planes, all the buses, all the mass transit, all the private cars and trucks on all of the world's roads. Um, and the livestock industry has an almost equal toll in terms of greenhouse gas emissions to deforestation. And that is an issue that has climbed up the climate agenda. And, it, and it's a crucial issue. And livestock has a role to play in that, as we'll see soon. But in terms of where livestock fits um, in the continuum, of greenhouse gas damage, it's really quite significant. And I have some colleagues who are doing some more research, and they're going to come out with some numbers this fall in October, showing that actually the contribution of livestock to the global greenhouse gas uh, total is even higher than the United Nations has found. So keep an eye out for that, and we can make you aware if you add your name to the sign-up sheet when that comes out. Just looking a little deeper into these numbers, because some of you will have seen that 18 there are three main greenhouse gases associated with livestock. So we hear a lot about CO2, carbon dioxide, we need to have lower carbon economies, lower our carbon footprint as individuals, as societies. So in terms of carbon emissions, you'll see it's not enormous, the livestock industry, it's 9% of the global total. That comes from things like deforestation, when carbon is released from soil, from plant matter, comes from plowing land to plant soy and corn, which are the main feed crops for livestock. It comes from chemical fertilizer production, which is an essential element of industrial agriculture. A lot of CO2 is consumed in that in the form of fossil fuels. But if we look at something like methane, and Marisa mentioned this as well, 
37% of global methane comes from the livestock industry, mostly from digestive processes, as well as from manure. But if you look at the potential power of methane in the atmosphere, it's 25, 23 times as strong as CO2s. So that means for every ton of CO2 emitted, every ton of methane emitted is 23 times the global warming effect. So it gives methane a much greater importance and something that hasn't been that much um, in the mainstream discussion of climate change. And then if we look at nitrous oxide, another uh, greenhouse gas, 65% of global nitrous oxide comes from the livestock sector. And as you'll see there, nitrous oxide is almost 300 times as powerful as carbon dioxide in terms of warming the atmosphere. So there are a lot of um, important scientific points here that I think need to get some more attention. And I do have, I can't remember which is which molecule, but those are all the exact molecules <laughs> of the uh, three main greenhouse gases. Okay, and just to take one example of methane, just to give you a sense of the scale of this. So if each adult cow emits between 176 and 242 pounds of methane a year, a little hard to envision a pound of a methane gas, but that's how it's measured. And dairy cows actually emit more than cows raised for beef. And one reason is that dairy cows are fed even more than beef cattle are. And there's an intensification of that feed to produce a very intense milk output. So those of you who might be vegetarian but not vegan, it is something to think about that the production of dairy is very, uh, very heavy in terms of its footprint on the environment and the climate. So there are approximately one and a half billion cows alive today. So if we do a quick calculation, it's an enormous amount of methane being produced each year from the cattle industry around the globe. And then to look at a few more numbers. In the United States right now, about 10 billion land animals, this is not including fish, are consumed, raised and consumed each year for meat. Large, large proportion of those are chickens. Um, the average American eats about 200 pounds of meat a year, so it's a little bit less than a pound a day. And we have currently more than 200,000 what are called CAFOs, also known as factory farms. CAFO means concentrated animal feeding operation. Of those operations, the waste from those is a half a billion tons, three times the human level. And as Marisa's video showed very well, that has enormous impacts in terms of climate, but also water, land, pollution, and uh, very important, um, well, very disturbing effects for local communities in terms of stench, air pollution, um, and some diseases that result from that. So pound for pound, pigs produce four times the waste that humans do. And again, that's a function of the way their digestive system is set up, but largely a function of the industrial model of animal production, where animals are fed enormous amounts of food to get them to be what's called slaughter weight as quickly as possible. 